Hey, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, no matter what time it is. I hope that you, my friends, are having an amazing day. My name is Carl Freund. I am the CEO of Kenneth James Realty. And unfortunately, I have to make this video for you to help you understand the fundamentals of what is going on in this market. I had made a video exactly about two years ago talking about the craziness in this market. I'm gonna insert just a little snippet right now in understanding that you know if interest rates change, that may um, do one of these things here, go up or go down, depending on what interest rates do. And as you guys can see, I pretty much called this thing uh, from day one. And so understand I've been in the real estate industry for 22 years. I've seen many different cycles and I can see human behavior and human behavior tends not to change, uh, even of course over a couple decades. So understand what we're looking at here. We are looking at unprecedented downward pressure on real estate prices. And I'm gonna show you exactly how we can get ourselves out of this mess, barring major government intervention, which we know how that goes, right? And so understand there's really only three ways that I can see how we can get out of this thing. If you guys know of any other ways, please put it in the comments below. And by the way, like and subscribe, dang, because I do these things for free. And so number one, we can lower interest rates, but we can't, right? Because we are experiencing a lot of inflation right now. When we have inflation in the double digits, the Federal Reserve is going to basically step in and really restrict monetary supply. They can do that a couple different ways. They can sell off bonds and they can raise interest rates, right? And so basically that upward pressure, uh, the cost of currency is going to increase. People are less likely to borrow money and that money doesn't get you know, distributed among the economy. And you, know, you can see what that, I mean, this is what the setup was, right? You know, so we kind of overcooked a lot of these markets. So what we saw was, you know, people had 2.25% interest rates and the affordability, you know, of a $500,000 house is really, really cheap, you know, accordingly if you're buying it on payments, which most people buy things on payments. So you go into a housing market and you're saying, hey, I can afford $2,500 a month. What does that get me right now? Well, at 2.25% gets you a heck of a lot. Problem is, mortgage rates today on a 30-year fixed conventional, this is October 1st, 2022, this is going to date itself, is seven and a half percent, okay? When I got into the real estate industry in 2000, that was a pretty good rate. But what we got over the past really 20 years was really low rates. And I mean, when you're talking about 2.25% versus seven and a half percent, the payment difference, guys, is huge. It could be hundreds, based on loan amount, it could be thousands of dollars a month. And so that's a little concerning because if you have a price in mind, like, you know, you don't, you don't go out to the, the housing market and say, hey, I wanna buy a $300,000 house. You go out and say, hey, I wanna spend $2,500 a month. That is the limiting factor. Once you can get your head around that, now you can see the setup here. Okay, so we can lower interest rates, but right now, that's off the table. Inflation is too high. Number two, we can increase wages. Here's the problem with that too. If you produce any kind of good or service, that probably requires raw materials. Raw materials to buy things right now is getting extraordinarily expensive. The supply chain is still jacked up. We can't seem to get it fixed for whatever reason. Here we are almost two years later, three years later, past COVID, right? And we still can't get our stuff together. Very frustrating. If we can start to fix the supply chains, we can start to bring the cost of raw materials and goods down, okay? And that will actually help inflation better than I think some of the other measures that we could take here are. Is it likely that wages are gonna increase? No, not at the pace of inflation, okay? So you could have people making more money, which then they could afford a 7.5% loan you could do that, okay, but all the other costs of goods and services, gasoline, food, uh, everything is going up, right? So that's not gonna work really either. The only thing that I can really think of here is that pricing of housing will drop to be congruent with a median or an average rate on a mortgage. An average rate on a mortgage that is not supported by government pressures, okay, basically they subsidize the secondary market, which I'm not gonna get into, should be about five and a half to six percent. If we have inflation in the two to, you know, say two percent range year, yearly. If two percent inflation happens, we can see rates that are five and a half or six percent if it's, everything else is in equilibrium, right? That's about average. And so that's what we really saw before COVID, right? I mean, things were kind of normal before COVID. And so um, I hate to break the bad news to you, but we're probably looking at a pretty significant price drop, especially because a couple different things. We have rising inventory and we have a declining economy and a lot of the housing markets are overcooked. And so the question I get most frequently is, well, how much are prices expected to drop? It's very dependent on the geographic area in which you live. 
I'm currently living in Phoenix, okay? We do business in about 13 different cities. I study the markets in each individual, you know, geographic area pretty readily. Phoenix is unique because we see a lot of immigration from other parts of the country, Midwest, California, Oregon, Washington State, uh, Chicago, you know, that kind of stuff, New York. So we're seeing a lot of immigration into the city and we're very compacted geographically, you know, where it's a valley, right? So it's very hard to build outside of that valley. And so we're doing a lot of infill projects which helps to bolster up prices. So a lot of demand, a lot more supply too, but you know, we are seeing a little bit influx, which might save Phoenix's butt. In a situation maybe like where you have Washington State or California, where you have mass exoduses of people, uh, you can see prices come down pretty drastically. And so understand that depends on your geographic market. If you're living in the Sun Belt, you're gonna be a lot less affected than maybe somebody that's living in a Northern state. Although the Northern states didn't see the overcooked markets that we saw in some of the other areas. So it's gonna be really dependent on where you're at. Um, guys, you know, if you're an amateur, please understand, you could be on the receiving end of a lot of pain, okay? If you are a professional, you can see a lot of opportunity. If you're working with a professional, they can probably guide you through this mess. And guys, I love markets like this personally because this is where I see a lot of opportunity to make a lot of money. If you've been sitting on the sidelines like I have been, I did divest out of the real estate market pretty heavily before this mess happened, because I saw the writing on the wall, okay, I can sit in cash and I can take advantage of opportunities that other people cannot take advantage of. I do see opportunity in commercial because we're seeing cap rates go up. I do see opportunity in long-term uh, rentals for residential, and I see opportunities in fix and flips if you can buy them right, okay? So there's still opportunities that exist. If you're looking to buy something and you're willing to hold on to it for 15 or 20 years, a longer-term investment, guys, there are still massive tax advantages, a lot of advantages to owning real estate. You can do 1031 exchanges, you can depreciate property, you can do a lot of different things, and you know, really um, subrogate a lot of your risk, okay? So understand that if you're a consumer watching this, you need to have a professional agent that has been through this, that has a proven track record of winning. If you are an agent, please do not play both sides of the coin. And I see a lot of agents speaking out of both sides of their mouth where they're saying, hey, it's a great time to sell, and by the way, it's a great time to buy. That is not the case, okay? Rarely is that the case. You need to understand, based on your geographic area, exactly what is going on and understand that even inside of Phoenix, there are pockets that you do not want to buy and there are pockets that you do want to buy. And so consult a professional, a true professional. Guys, that's it for me today. If you haven't done it already, please take two seconds to like and subscribe. That would mean the world to me. Have a prosperous day and I can't wait to see you very, very soon. Thanks, take care, see you.